episode 40 of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time, we were cross-examining Rolly and Pat again. Basically, just seeing their thoughts on the matter of just flying books coming out of the Garadev household. And basically, we learned that the street that the incident happened across the street from Rolly's beat... Which basically would mean, which means that basically he was allowed to continue his date, which basically is very suspicious, very suspicious, and very coincidental. So, anyways, you're you're dating us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I I really was. I mean, what's she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman in my word. I am. Uh, I really don't remember suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses! I don't want to hear it! You'll cancel at Twitter.com! My voice will be heard! My lord, now let me speak, won't you? Yes, Miss Beat, I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the, sa is, is the sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that! Japanese man thinks a policeman's wise word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my Rolly won't. <laughs> and then basically, Rolly. And then Patricia. Get him, Rolly. Yes, Pat. Yes, yes, sir. And then Rolly, he basically, his eyes are glowing red. He tears off his shirt. And then basically, he starts punching Rio in the suitcase. He starts punching me in the suitcase over and over again. That's right, Rody! Beat him up! Beat him up! And then basically, and then Magnus McGill, it's Ghost. He's in the background. Oh, yes, this is very good. Very good indeed. Now, Todd Danton, you're halfway there. Yes, sir. And then, and then, Rolly starts dancing while punching me in his suitcase like a cha cha cha. One, two, three. Cha cha cha. One, two, three. And then, basically, then Van Zeeks is watching this and just, he's shaking his head. What has my life become? And then he just tosses his hollow challenge his eye and he just starts guzzling from the wine bottle. Duly noted, Miss Beat. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could the possi- What could you possibly say now, I wonder? Hold it! Let's press this. Miss Beat, nobody's questioning what you told us. I saw what I did that evening. I saw clearly that little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curt back slinking away from the scene. <sighs> and I know that I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. All very clear. You, you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up in the wrong place where I've made arrangements to meet Raleigh. He gets ever so cross. Rolly's having the rage attacks. You, Pat, you won't like me when I'm angry. Excuse me. Console beat. Is there a problem? Eh, uh, mm, uh, yeah, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remarks just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening is all. You mean Miss Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent off to find a police box in the next beat over to mine. But she was gone a bit far longer than I, wish, than I was expecting. I thought she'd be back inside ten minutes, but my darling was a gone a good fifteen. Oh, really? You're such a tease! But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly! The bouquet? Sorry? What bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary! Really so romantic! He stole it from the graveyard! He saved up for it while with four things and four eight pennies he found in the gutter while doing his round. Yes, how romantic. I 
had forgotten all about it just now, had you, my darling? Ah, uh, hmm, uh, oh yes, but that was just between us. No talking about anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. What was that all about? Kazo Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insights, Mr. Naruto. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mr. Beat, up, Mr. Beat about the bouquet. Miss Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Pearl press this first. You mean we dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When I ran over and I saw and saw it was a woman with a knife in her back, I was so shocked I dropped the bouquet Roly gave me. It was a dark in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police box to report to the policeman whose B it was on. Yes, and he came and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I saw my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. In case you need reminding, Miss Beats, the victim is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me. I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think it how it got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. Hmm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is I forgot to pick the bouquet up again when we left the scene. A beautiful rose really bought me. With that change from the gut that he'd spent so long collecting. By bouquet. Do you both mean this sorry solitary rose? You poor pathetic cuck of a man. I will end your career. I will take your wife and your dignity. For I am the chattest vampire alive. Edward's got nothing on me. Though then again, he had nothing to begin with. For you see, unlike Edward, I have personality. Oh, yes, yes, that's it. That's a bouquet really bought me more anniversary with the odd bits of change you found the gutter. Maybe just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Vazix, where do you come by this flower? According to a report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadeb household. In front of the Garadeb's house? Although it wasn't noted until this morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance in the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have it back now, please? No, it's my rose now. Hmm. No, I think for good measure, this rose should be added to the court record's evidence. Oh! The anniversary bouquet has been added. But it's a symbol of our love. I just want to see just what Ria Nisuke and Susano have in terms of comments. An English rose. It's such a beautiful flower. Ah, this is a rose, is it? I've never seen one before. Do you not take an interest in flowers, Mr. Naruto? I wouldn't say that exactly, but I know three types at least. Just like Phoenix. Gosh. Gosh, three? Yes, plum blossoms, peach blossoms, and cherry blossoms. Meanwhile, Phoenix knows lilies, sunflowers, dahlias, and irises. He knows at least four flowers. Perhaps you should consider branching out, learning some that aren't fruit tree based, for example. It's very stylish paper the flowers wrapped in, isn't it? It's just an old newspaper, Mr. Naruto. Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English print. It looks so exotic to me. Ah, uh, I see. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. I was just thinking that if you wrapped a stone baked sweet potato in an English newspaper, it might look like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, Susato san, do do love your cakes. I want it back at the trial! 
Do you hear me? I want it back! Good grief! Rest, rest assured that I will do my best to not forget his beat. I don't throw me in the names! Yeah, I love how just this case is stealing my joke. Okay, I want to save the game because I'm probably going to get guilty somehow. I've got to get the guilty. Might as well save to ensure that the guilty does not strike me down. Okay. Ah, no! Not again! Well, Mr. Rito, what do you make of all this? Hmm, yes. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened by here now. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made sure made me sure that Mrs. Garadev was hiding something from us. But it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may have already be a, I may already be armed with the evidence I need to do a, stri a decisively striking blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. Okay. Okay. Present the rose. Objection. There we go. I just I knew it was one of these two that we'd present the rose on. Your claim you claim constable beat that there was nothing to report in the 15 minutes 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene and why can I not speak for the life of me? But that cannot be. What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Miss Beat, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to the Beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection. Yes, on the opposite side of the Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that mega bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, back into the gutter where it belongs. I just love how Van Zeeks is so civil, yeah, he delivers such savage burns. Really, Edgeworth has nothing on this guy. Van Zeeks could give Edgeworth a run for his money. Heck, <laughs> Van Zeeks is go is go is, uh, is Galarian Edgeworth. <laughs> Basically, yeah, just Galarian Edgeworth. Mika? Objection. But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's, that's what Rolly, why Rolly didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly, if it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Miss Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Garadev's book. Mr. Garadev's copy of The Lion's Pride, which was thrown out the window by his wife. Would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Miss Beat's bouquet... ...should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the street. But in fact... It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road, in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadip's house. There's no logical explanation for those things. Unless somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Rolly's done something wrong. Don't you listen to what that squire lawyer says? Right? Writing on about books and bouquets. Why should we care? It's nitpicking. That's what it is. Oh, good. Mrs. Garadeb's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadeb. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, um... Tampering, Mr. Naruto. 
but the person responsible for this tamper cannot admit to it for a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection. Tampering? You've barely heard the term before! Tell us, my learned friend, who would possibly have had a cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you submit this conjecture. Substantiate. Who are, the, who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Take that! Rolly. Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Counsel, Rolly beat. It was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? That, what nonsense! Why would my Rolly do something like that? It's this traitor! Right. There's no one traitor than my husband! Nobody works more tirelessly for the police than none of London! Miss Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! What about the Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him! He did it! Objection. If that were true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Oh! And forgive me for pointing this out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Miss Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Ah, uh, well, well... Objection! First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you create a policeman as well? Does your treachery know no bounds? But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To, to hide something. That's right, he's right. But my husband and I just happen to be there. That's all. So why would he, we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You have uh, you've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Kanzo B had a very good reason for wanting to tampering, tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Naruto, have you... Have you managed to solve this mystery? Counsel, you have been made very, a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you, were, if you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With this dark, with this dark worry in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Console Beat's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide where the victim fell. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You, you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? That on the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly well, that's certainly what everyone has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? I begin to wonder where this tumultuous trial will end, Counsel. Sorry. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Okay. Okay, just want to make sure that's on the street, exactly. But, but that's... On the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garrett's book fell directly down from the open window above. And your bouquet, Miss Beats, never moved at all. What did move? Was the was the scene of the crime itself. Good. Good gracious. Objection. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the movement the, 
the moment the attack took place. That's, that's right. I saw it with my own eyes. It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It can't have been. Can Council Beat then arranged for you to ha be absent for a while by certain to you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he translated the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in the print. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What do you overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few moments ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Renzik said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't have been seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet. That was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rolly Beat? I will now end you. Sleeping kitten style. Um, uh, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, really? It isn't true, is it? What that lawyer said was all lies, isn't it? I know it is because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream, a terrible dream. All the things I did that night, everything come out, everything exposed. Only it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good, good golly! Order, order, order! What on earth is the meaning of this? Oh, Rowley, why? Why would you do something like this? I love how she's just so entranced that she basically, that she's basically so enamored with him that basically she's not shocked that her husband tampered with a crime scene. He moved an, an unconscious woman's body. He lifted it over his shoulder. He dragged it across the street. That he grabbed her foot and he just dragged it across the road. Four carriages ran over, but he wasn't deterred. Moving a corpse is, is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I, I can't say so. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation for, for everything. I have a possible explanation. For a while, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Van Zeeks, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel, counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I, I, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the, of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the moment for Constable Beat's unthinkable actions? Take that! I realize I'm a foreigner in this land, and I have only just arrived from Japan, which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I learned that, though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the civilian the citizens of his beat in all kinds of ways. 
There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes! It was our very first wedding anniversary! Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife. And was looking and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Miss Beats stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw the shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them. What must have been going through the man's mind? But son, just on that particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary, and then I get these people ruining my day! Come on, man! Why is it that why is it that these people, the people of London, are freaking blue balling my ass? Miss Beat puts a lot up a lot with me being married to a Bobby like me. I want to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the warrant card that Console Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules of patrolling policemen, it says. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Oh! Console of Beats. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh! Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on the console on console beats beat. Wait, did I, did I actually say the name right? Wait, did, okay, let me just check. Console beats beat. Yes, beat beat beat. Good gracious, constable! Do you realize the gravity of what you've done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Even though not counting the six not counting the six times I do it before five o'clock. Stay close to me, Bat. The criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran out the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what it meant for me. When a crime is discovered on a speed up, policemen must assist with, the, with, assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why has this happened here? And why tonight of all nights? Why, God? Why are you trying to blue ball me? Why? It's a compass job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Apache had to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is this is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police box that goes it. Turn right along Michonne Street and then I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, Constable! I, I just wanted, I wanted to get to first base, that's all. I'm very lonely on my beat. Just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, really? Just that one night. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move this entire crime scene outside your jurisdiction and make my life a living hell. 
just across the street, to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beats Care. You see, I, I thought, well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see? I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would never have just left the poor woman in the prison called Pavement. At least not without kicking her first, or taking her wallet, or her money. Oh, I see your meaning now. My guy give, got me back for my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why I missed the robes I brought for Pat. Oh no, Rowley. It was all my fault. I should never have dropped you in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Rowley. And can you tell us, Constable? How many books did you move from the one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um... Four it was. Yes, sir. Uh, definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadette household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly about, I mean. Oh, well, sir. That's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. The fourth book's iteration has been updated. I thought it was open and sh an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you look at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the arm, really. I didn't think moving it all over moving it all over the road would make a John of difference. I I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. My lord. Yes, Lord Vezix? I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, sir, what will become of my Rory? What will happen to him? His pair shall be dropped. They it will be dropped so low it will transcend space and time, and its impacts will be felt by the least paid detective of all time, whether they are in the future or in the past. And then all of a sudden, Gumshoe, he feels this feeling. Ah! Gumshoe, Gumshoe basically falls over while cleaning Edgeworth's office. Gumshoe, what happened? Mr. Edgeworth, it's horrible. I, I felt somewhere. Somewhere, I don't mean, well, somewhere in space or time or somewhere. Just a, a police officer's pay was cut so low in rivaling mine. For now, you are free to go home. The police will conduct you in due course. Please don't punish my husband. This, this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at her for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. All right then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir, sir. Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant may seem to you. Yes, sir. Call that lesson to your mind. I never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of the crime. Ah, ne never again, sir. You you mean to say? Leave now. This trade is not yet over. Ah, uh, um, sir. But really, I love how Brock Van Zeeks, the guy who basically the game, who basically the series states is this vampire who is this, this grim, dour prosecutor who has led to the deaths of countless defendants. Basically, just, he is apparently more merciful than Edgeworth because basically the, a police officer 
that basically does a crime. A police officer commits a clear crime of tampering with a, with a crime scene. And basically, Van Zeeks, he's like, I will forgive you. Because he understands the situation. He takes the situation into account. Meanwhile, Edgeworth, gumshoe so much his breathes wrong. Pay cut! <laughs> yeah, really. Just go how many pay cuts Gumshoe gets? Gumshoe gets pay cuts for even talking to Phoenix about stories of Edgeworth's investigations that aren't even related to the case. Whoever thought of a third party translating the entirety of the crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immu immutable facts here. Principally, that I think now would be a good time to end the episode off. I really appreciate that you stuck around to watch this episode. You're a great viewer. I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share, do whatever you want. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.